Um, now it supports um, more families. It supports um, hair highlights. And also it supports um, multiple levels of material IDs for color changes if you have that in your mesh. Before it only would change the color tint on the first index of the actual material. But now if you have multiple material IDs inside of your actual material, it will scan through those and give you a random color, a, a similar random color, but it will still go through there and set the random color to those different instances. Um, I have the first one selected right here. So now I have actual morphs and everything working inside of the generator along with the height information. You got body morphs for um, thickness, for thinness, for um, breast size, and so far everything is working pretty well. There's still a few piece, pieces where I see a little poke through, but I'm gonna show my process on that and what I had to do to get through those um, or come up with a solution for that. Um, so inside of the actual morph section, I've updated this blueprint to actually support not just morph families, but the ability to blend those morphs within those families together. So for example, things like breast, you wouldn't want to mix these morphs together. You want it to pick either or and actually apply a morph to that specific data parameter. So what I've had, what I've added is the ability for within a morph family to designate the max morph mixing. So if you only wanted to select one object within this family and apply a morph to it, you just have to put one in there. If you put zero, it'll do everything in that family and give it all a random value. Or if you want to just mix two or three Depending on what you have in your morph targets, you can put that number in there and it will randomly pick three, apply morph to that, and be done with it. Um, as you can see, I have different families for the breast size, the um, body thickness. You have lips. I'm actually blending two of these together. You have the nose morph targets, eye morph targets. I'm blending two of those together randomly to get a different um different feel of the eyes for a character to make them look different um you have the rounded face cheekiness and the chin modification morphs um you have the ears out and size you have the actual eye size and iris um actually I want to blend these Yo, know, it's already set to zero, so it's gonna go through every single one of these. Um, and then you have for the last section, I have all the emotions. I did. I only have these going from a negative, like a very, very minor negative scale, to half of the emotions. So that way, it can blend emotions together to get the NPCs, the random NPCs, at least some kind of character. Or, some kind of idea of how they're feeling. I'm like, it's not really noticeable, but if you look at them, then you'll see that they have some kind of emotion on their face instead of a completely bland, flat face. Um, and right now I'm only blending with one, but I can blend with multiple faces, emotions, if I want to. And I might just try that out to see how it, went, how it goes. Um, but... The reason I don't go all the way to one is because if I did want to give a specific NPC, like someone I'm talking to, a deeper emotion, so that way if I go to the extreme of mad or miffed or sleepy or sad or something like that or some other ones that I don't even have here, I can easily blend to the extent while decreasing that initial base emotion that they have in their face. So let's say that they're blending between sleepy and please 
if I make them mad, it'll blend out of please, it'll blend out of sleepy to zero, and then blend mad all the way full, so that way you can actually see their face emotions fully change. Um, and it just gives you that effect that you're looking for. If I go over to the materials for the player, for the player each of the materials that I have in here, um, I've added the tint color. Um, and I will have a link in the description when I finish this to everywhere where I'm using the actual um, uh, shader information for where I got it online. Um, this one, the hair and the cloth were from tutorials or someone who offered something to the community. So shout out to everybody who helps in the community. I just love the Unreal Engine community. Um, so we got the tint for the body, so we can change the color the color size. Inside of this hair sh um, this hair shader, um, I have the tint in here as well. And I defaulted the highlight to black for the tip. Um, and also, I went skip the head. And also for the clothing, for this clothing shader, I've modified it to where I have a mixture of, if I can get close enough, you kind of can see it. Well, I have a mixture of a noise normal and an actual normal for the actual fabric. So that way um, you can get different effects for the actual fabric. Kind of like ZBrush does it, kind of. Um, and within that, I have a RNG section. Which the which the C plus plus code will come in and give this a random offset, so that way it'll scale the normal up, it'll scale the noise up, and then it'll blend between whether we're going to use all of the clothing normal or the actual fabric normal, completely washing out the um, the the fabric pattern that I'm using. Um, and then outside of that, I also have the code changes here. For those who want to apply that to theirs, I'll just go through this real quick. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure I cover everything so you can pause it. If, if you want to update your plugin to that, I don't know if I'm going to add this particularly to it because it may add a level of complication that's not needed. Um, but for those who want to actually adopt this into theirs, um, the code is here. I'm showing you the little snippets so you can add in the parts that I've changed to get the same thing into your toolkit. Um, so morph data is now morph params. And I've changed morph data to actually hold the morph list for the families. So that way you can come in and change the stuff that I was saying before um, in the header I added the morph targets I changed that to more family since that's more of what they are I've added the RNG variables for the blends I've also added the ability to use a the hair color as the eye color so that way you know in some animes one of the rules is to keep the eye color the same as the hair color. That way they can always be in sync. So I added that ability. Also added an eye tint for changing the color of the eye. Um, and I've also added the ability to do hair highlights and a boolean that I randomly switch on and off. So that way if I have a hairstyle that has a highlight, it will randomly decide whether it wants to apply the highlight or don't apply the highlight based on that random value. Um, because I'm supporting all the material indexes that are in your actual in your actual actor um, or clothing, whatever you may have it, I've had to change all the material dynamic instance to um, a multi-dimensional array pretty much so that way it can scan through and get a handle of all those material instances so it can apply the color tint to anything that has a parameter inside of it that states that it can apply that it can accept a color tint 
Um, same thing, I've added another highlight for the hair as well. Over in the CPP, I just initialize this to false. This is where I go through, I make sure it's emptied out from the previous um, generation of a character or a mesh. And then we go through, dynamically go through everything and get that mesh instance handle and set the new um, the instance to the mesh that we're generating. I do that for every single one of these. So this is pretty much the same thing for all the different parts of the body. And then for the actual hair highlights, I only go through the first instance. So that's one limitation, but it's not really needed for, I don't need to go through everything for the actual hair since that shouldn't really have many different parts. These are the changes I did for the actual eye color, for the hair highlights to get the random value for it. Um, this is where we randomly select whether we're going to use a hair highlight or not. And these are the places where we get the randomness for the actual noise for the clothing. And then we just go through and apply those changes. So here's where we select whether we're going to use the um, eye color. Since the in the actors, I don't know exactly where the eye color would be inside of that index. If that material, if there's a material that is on there with the parameter eye color, it's going to go and apply that eye color tint to that material index. So it doesn't really matter where you have your material for your eye, it'll find it by that parameter. And if that parameter is set, it's going to set it inside of your material instance parameter. Um, here's where we have the clothing information, where we're applying the random noise information to the clothing. And here's the high, here's the ha the hair highlights, where we can randomly select whether we're going to actually do a highlight or just set everything to the default hair color. Over here with the more family. What we're doing is pretty much going through it, looking at the number, looking at the number for the max morphs. If that is a number that we have to care about, like zero, um, like a non-zero value or something that's, if someone accidentally puts in a high number, um, if someone doesn't accidentally put a high number, we're gonna come in here, randomly pick from that morph family the number of desired mixes for the morphs. And then we're going to apply a random number to that morph and zero out the rest. If for some reason you put in zero or you put in the actual wrong number that's outside of the range, it's just going to come through and give a morph to everything in the family. And this is where they actually apply the actual morphs to everything that's in there. So now you got um, the morph being applied to the, the body, the legs, the feet. And everything in there it looks like before I didn't even have support for unless I'm looking at the wrong code or an older code it looks like I didn't even have morphs in the actual clothing and hair before so this piece I might have to add to the plugin updates because that seems like it would be needed unless you just have face morphs so this actually adds supports for morphs for the other clothing that's attached to the NPC um, and that should be everything that covers that I mean if you haven't seen this before if I can open this here's where we define the generation for a female base so we have the actor we have anything that's going to be a full body outfit here now some of these may need um, um, asset physics for especially for the dress, but in fourteen fourteen, well four fourteen is currently not working. It's busted. Um, we have all of our bodies, which are our shirts. We have all of our leg items, which is the bottom, um, which is you know pants, skirts, things like that. We have our boot section, our feet area, and then we have our multiple types of hair 
and it pretty much will randomly select from this list to actually generate your character. And then on top of that, you have your morph definitions, which tells you, hey, on top of generating this character, apply these random morphs to the body or to the face or wherever these morphs may exist, and it will apply these morphs. Now note, most of these morphs have to do with the face, but inside the actual clothing itself, they share morph names. So for things that affect the, all the other clothing, um, if you create meshes and morphs, if you create a morph that has the same name, it's going to scan through and apply that. So that way, if you need your shirts or your skirts to follow these morph patterns, if you include that in there, then it'll work that way. So if I go over to my ZBrush and I show all my clothing, that probably a little too much let me see there we go stop it so if I go down to my clothing all of my clothing have especially the dress has the parameters for the breast size for the body thickness and things like that that I can apply um, and I can change those parameters in here in ZBrush and see how they're going to affect. Um, for those who haven't done this before, pretty much all you have to do is, is add a new layer. I have to be at the maximum resolution for it. You add a new layer. You can come in here, name it whatever morph you need it to be, and then start sculpting. And once you're done, turn off the recording, and then you can apply your morphs. To get these out of the engine, all you have, all of the out of ZBrush, um, all you have to do is just do an FBX export with layers enabled, and you can get those over into your authorization program or straight into um, Unreal if that's what you need it for. Um, but that's the basics of everything that I've done to actually create this. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, but this should take care. Uh, I guess the rest of everything really.